Today we're going to set up the Viking Electronics ring amplifier. Now I used to have a surge protector that I would put in between all the phones and this amplifier just because while I think this is a very good quality piece of equipment I've never had an issue with it I just feel like this is one of those pieces where like if a cap was to go bad or something it would just blow everything out on the line so I I used to put the surge protector there but now I can't find it I think there's a box of miscellaneous telephone equipment that I've buried somewhere misplaced because that that um, surge protector is probably with the original amplifier that I cannot find anymore so annoying very annoying but uh, whatever we'll just go without it for now I will find I'll find the box soon I have a couple of days off from work in the near future and I plan to just spend most of the time cleaning up around here and get back to a functional situation here and I know people are uh, missing the regular kind of videos that I, I used to record a lot of the videos uh, recently have not been doing too well uh, which I understand I'm not the typical content now that I have the heat in the garage and the uh, studio is almost built I'll be able to get back to regular videos and once I get this ring amplifier installed I'll be able to do phone setups so I'm going to put on the the uh, DC voltage booster so just as a comparison the phone works fine now but you see when I press the buttons to make the tones Well, you're not seeing it on the video here, but the backlighting dims significantly. So there is definitely a, a lack of voltage, which is to be expected, considering how much equipment and how much wiring the uh, signal is going through. So, um, we're going to do this. Now, I never did this on the other one that I had set up and I I believe it's just because I didn't know that it could do that so uh, we need to remove some screws here so let's see what kind of screws they're regular Phillips screws I think the tools are over here here they are I need to buy those things that you you hang the tools off of on here and I can't I can't find them I can't buy them because I don't know what they're called <laughs> so if anybody knows what they're called uh, let me know so that I can buy them okay so that one's kind of big I'll just use this one because I know I can change the bit to to one that will fit correctly. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to um, remove these two screws on the bottom of the unit. Good fitting bit. Uh, remove the two screws and remove the top cover. Oh, that certainly comes apart very easily. 
Okay, so now I think at this point we have to we have to plug it in. So this is I gotta extend the tripod a bit here. So this is the uh, look at this Ooh, yeah. terrible quality film. This is this is my. Uh, networking rack which I built custom out of wood. The reason I built it out of wood is because I want to have different shelves and things mounted in various places that a conventional server or networking rack would not allow for. Um, so I can pretty much build any kind of shape shelf or mounting bracket that I want on here and anything will fit. So that's why I did it this way. It is a disaster right now, but it'll eventually be cleaned up like everything else around here. So, uh, we're going to need to plug in the ring amplifier's power supply. So, I'll go ahead and do that now. It's a pretty beefy power supply. Good quality stuff here. The power supply is a... Uh, takes in 22 watts and 120 volts, it outputs 13.8 volts AC at 1250 milliamps and it does not indicate that it's made in China so it probably isn't. Okay so I'll plug this in here and then I'll plug the other end into my amplifier here and the power indicator has come on so that's good I've never looked inside this thing before it's got a very simple circuitry well I shouldn't say it's simple but it's um, there's not a quadrillion things on there. I don't see any, uh, like I said, a microprocessor kind of control. It's they've got nice big capacitors on there. It looks like it's very well made. If you had to recap this, it wouldn't be all that difficult. All right, so now let's take a look at the instructions again. And it says uh, to connect the telephone line or analog station to the line in modular cord. So it's going to be this coming out of my magic jack and uh, line in. Okay and then it says there's our tripod kick for the video then it says, uh, number three, connect a single line telephone or a rear end set to the out to phones jack on the RG10A. Okay, so I'm going to go grab a, uh, I think I have a desk set over here. Uh, yes, I do. It's a nice old, uh, uh, the jack is jacked up. Uh huh. Uh, it's a nice old uh, is this an AT&T? yes it is AT&T um, so I'll set this one up unfortunately it looks like the jack has had a mishap at some point um, but we'll use it anyways or actually you know what I may go grab because I would need another phone line for this I'm just going to go grab that 2554 that was floating around. Okay, I've got the 2554. And uh, I'll just connect this because I don't need a phone line. So we'll connect this to the, the out to phones. And of course, this is going to become extremely. Uh, inconvenient to work with, but 
Sometimes that's life. Okay. Alright, so that's connected now. Oh, there's a second tripod connect for the video. So now it says number four, connect power to the RG10A. We did that. Number five, set the loop current boost switch to the on position. That's this one. Um, let's zoom this in here. That's this switch uh, over here, this one on. So that should give us a loop current, current boost. Then it says go off hook on the single line telephone. The loop LED light will, will light and the dial tone will be heard in the phone. Okay. That's, that's accurate. Sorry, I had buffalo chicken for lunch. Number seven. Set the polarity switch to the position that gives you the brightest loop LED while off hook with the phone. And the polarity switch is uh, the other one here. So that looks like it's bright. I'll switch it. It's dimmer. So that's the correct. Um, it was already correct. Now I'm just curious if I disconnect this single line telephone and I connect. I don't think it'll matter because it's probably talking about the polarity of the incoming line. But if I connect the rest of my the telephones, which is this, will the polarity change? I think I've got a cordless. Yep, I got a cordless over here. Let me grab this. Hook. It's the same. Okay. So now we can button this back up and we'll go upstairs and we'll take a look at at what the uh, how that that uh, trim line phone is behaving. It functions fine, so if it makes no difference, I don't really care, but it, if it makes a difference, then that's great. It's better that way. Alright, that was easy. The instructions were clear, and the operation was simple. Now we'll uh, put this back. It doesn't look like it matters which way it goes. It looks like it's symmetrical. I really think this is a great product. I used the original one before I misplaced it for many years and it worked absolutely flawlessly. I suspect we'll have the same result with this one as the original one, if I can ever find it. Okay, and just for my personal reference, this is uh, uh, November 22, 2022 install date for this unit. Take you back over here so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully. So we'll take this line in, power out the phones. And this should be ready to operate. Let's go see how the uh, trim line phone is doing upstairs.
still dims quite a bit, uh, but less. Uh, hopefully, if nothing else, it's taking the load off of the magical jack. While that too I never had any issues with, I'm sure that this used case that it's installed in right now is far exceeding what it was ever intended to do. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work, but let's go ahead and call, um, call the telephones here. It's not working. Well, that's odd. Huh. Okay, so we have a problem. Uh, I was not expecting there to be a problem. I know the telephones are working fine because I, I received a call earlier this afternoon and uh, everything worked okay. Huh. That's really baffling that I not... I plugged it in correctly. Huh. That's really strange. It looks like it's... Something's grabbing it. Alright, let's, um, let's start with each individual run. So let's start with... Uh, Start with this run and see if this works properly just by itself. I believe that just goes up to the cordless phones uh, in the kitchen. Okay, that's working correctly. So this is good. I suspect this is some kind of a polarity issue somewhere, or it could be a, a very uh, slight short somewhere too, perhaps. Okay, that works fine. So there's the problem. It's within this run. Something is wrong with this run. So just to confirm my theory, let's uh, plug this whole thing back in. And we'll call it again and we should get correct operation. All right, so something is wrong with this line. If I had to take a guess, I would say there's some kind of a very partial short somewhere, which was fine before, but now that we have more voltage and amperage going through there, now it's a problem. So I'll probably start by terminating this again down here. And then uh, if that doesn't work, I'll terminate it again upstairs. And if that doesn't work, we'll try using a different twisted pair. And if that doesn't work, then I guess the run is scrap and we'll have to start over.